Hey everybody, Boris Lasser from BK Forest. Welcome to our Forex Daily Technicals for 8-21-13. Well, it is FOMC day tomorrow, and that's going to be the absolute critical risk event for the week. As always, before trading Forex, it's uh, very important to understand that trading Forex on margin carries a high level risk and abuse for all investors. And you should be aware of all the research on trading Forex on margin and seek advice from an independent financial advisor. If you have any doubts, please read this disclaimer in full very carefully to understand all the risks of trading Forex. Well, um, Euro today just blew the doors open and took out the very um, tough resistance here at around 134. We took to we went to 34.50, but then um, then pushed off the um, the highs by around uh, mid morning US, kind of just sort of hanging around here 34.23. Um, it's pretty pretty positive day, although there's certainly potential for reversal tomorrow if, if there's a very hawkish FOMC statement and there's a potential basically effectively in setting a, a little bit of a higher double top here, but if we get further continuation, a breakthrough here, sort of, you know, take out through 3450s, puts us squarely on a path to 35, and really, resistance doesn't come in until about 3550 or so, um, and the ultimate resistance is really around 37. So the euro looks very strong. The move here, um, even if it retreats a little bit, could, very, could be very consolidative in nature. Basically, unless the euro sort of turns back and breaks below the 33 handle um, with, with severity, the, the uh, any kind of a retreat here is going to be more of a consolidation rather than rather than a, a near term top. If we do break higher, then of course 35 and 3550 uh, come into view on the euro. So the trade sets up here quite nicely. We talked yesterday about how 34 was critical, and obviously you see how the, the once it broke, it went for another 50 points um, on, a, on a momentum move. Dollar yen. The story here is sort of the reverse. Here we're holding 97. We've been holding 97 really for almost a week here. Um, as support, and that's going to be another critical level uh, to watch tomorrow. Because if, if again, if we have dovish FOMC, if we have sort of suggestion that perhaps there's no tapering in September, that they want to have more clarity and visibility before they uh, they begin to move, then we could easily break here 97s, and really the test becomes the 96s. 96 is a much steeper support here, um, and it can hold. If on the, on the other hand, this is the lows for the day, and this is sort of the lows for the week. And we've set the uh, the move up, and the breakout range here is 98. We've got to hold 98 and close above it to kind of relieve all this negative bearish sentiment that the yen um, has been experiencing. To really, if you do hold above 98, then the whole technical structure kind of turns more positive. You basically have higher lows, <coughs> excuse me, and a potential now to rework its way back up to 99 and 100. Um, on the other hand, we start breaking 96s, and of course, excuse me, 97s, then we, then we have obviously a test of 96s, but then it would be a very, very negative. It's basically a downward channel sloping move that ultimately targets the uh, the lows of 94s. So um, it's going to be very much, I think, a tale of two cities tomorrow, which way we develop. And that's why it's very important to be flexible and just watch the price action to give you some clues as to potential directionality that it's going to have. Cable, cable uh, following euro, following um, all the anti dollars higher, but this 57, 57, 50 corridor, very, very tough. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be easy for this thing to break through unless we have some sort of unbelievably uh, dovish news on a dollar, and then we just have a power move that cable is very, very uh, popularly known for, and then we have a power move all the way to 5800. But if it's a sort of a slow, steady crawl, I think you're going to see a lot of offers in the 57, 57, 50 level, because obviously that's, that's the operating swing, a swing high here. But still, cable looks relatively healthy, and certainly it's breaking out, and certainly it's, 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 it's crawling its way higher. If we do start to fold here, the immediate level of support is 56, and then if it starts to break down below 55, 50, that would be pretty negative because it would suggest a lower, lower top here and a potential distribution all the way to the bottom. So um, also worth watching cable on these levels as we go forward. And lastly, of course, Aussie and Kiwi both were dogs today. They continue to be the you know the weak links in the chain here. The only positive thing you can take away from the Aussie today is the fact that 90 held and we have a modest modest bounce bounce off the lows and a potential doji here. But um, Aussie basically is a, used to be a story 91, 92.50 or 90, 92.25. Now it's 90.92. It's still range bound, still very much basing. Um, the old, the, from a longer point of view, you could take heart in the fact that we haven't really dipped down to, to, uh, to the lows at 88.50. Um, and it may be a situation where the Aussie, if it breaks down 90s, it certainly, it certainly has a test here, potential for 88.50. But it's still, if you take a very, very long view, kind of basing. And um, the longer it bases, 
the bullish, the more bullish it becomes, because it would suggest that um, as long as the base, as long as you have support over here, it could then mount an eventual rally to the upside. On the other hand, we start breaking, of course, uh, below the 8850s, all, all bets are off. But that's, uh, I think, pretty much in the future. For now, it's just grind, small range bases, and really, it's a range trader's delight if you want to trade ranges. For a momentum trader, it's basically to stay away at this point, as there's very little opportunity here on the Aussie side. Uh, Kiwi had a more negative uh, structure today because they got just hammered by a uh, wheeler in by the bad news on the uh, milk contamination front. So here you basically have a triple top at around 80 once that, that kind of uh, an uneven triple top, but they're triple top nevertheless, a breakdown to uh, 79s. And now I think the 79 itself is going to be a very key hold. If that doesn't hold, that would be a very sharp reversal and a move potentially right back down towards the uh, 78s, maybe even 77s, which actually brings me to, I think I'm going to have to pull this up uh, manually, um, to an interesting look, I think, as far as the crosses go tomorrow. This basically assumes if you think we are going to be dovish tomorrow and there's pressure uh, on the yen, then the yen crosses, um, one of the more interesting yen crosses to the downside here is the is the uh, Kiwi yen, with 77 as the initial test, and then ultimately as possibly 75, because you would have this whole massive distribution. It's almost like an inverse head, not an inverse, it's almost like a head and shoulders here, with this um, shoulder level here waiting to be broken. So it's worth watching on the cross levels if you're, if you're following the yen. Um, the end story tomorrow on the bomb seat. Other than that, that's pretty much how the uh, day sets up. Wishing you guys the best of luck and the best of trading. This is Borch Lossberg, over and out.